Hi, RuneScape! We'll miss it here with a new video and how is everyone doing? For the past year or so, Jagex have been developing a book about the history of RuneScape, titled RuneScape, The First 20 Years, An Illustrated History. The book finally started arriving to the ones who pre-ordered it back in March, and as a long-term RuneScape veteran and someone who makes history videos about the game, you can be sure I jumped on that like a free meal. Who knows what kind of gems might be hidden inside? What kind of new information about past events would reveal itself through the many interviews in the book? The cost of the final product is $100 plus shipping. Quite expensive, so I imagine a lot of the potential buyers would be hesitant to spend that amount without knowing what they're getting. So I took it upon myself the honor to buy the book and tell you all about it, as a book review. So you don't have to spend your hard-earned IRL GP on something you know nothing about. The book is written by author Alex Calvin, a gaming journalist who's written a variety of articles about games and the gaming business for online newspapers such as GamesIndustry.biz, The Guardian and Esquire. Jagex had hunted him and the publisher Dark Horse in 2020 to write the book giving Mr. Calvin full access to Jagex and its staff to develop a written history of the game. The book itself is made of surprisingly good quality. RuneScape merch tends to be a little bit on the downside when it comes to its durability, often being made with cheap materials, but this one is on the very opposite end. The deluxe edition, which is the one I got, comes in this cool hardback cover. On the inside you find the book, and this display-worthy folio containing two prints. One is a God Wars battle with General Gwardor, whilst the other one is of Tim and Crunchy. The book is rather large, a gold-edged lexicon of RuneScape. 224 durable plastic-like pages, following a main storyline of the game's development from start to present day, but also a series of smaller stories about the game's content, such as the developers talking about Monkey Madness 2 or the King Black Dragon, giving insight in the development and thought behind some of RuneScape's most important updates. What I found nice is that the book also covers some minor updates, such as the Swan Song Quest or Morning Ends Part 2 for some reason. On the other side, the book is entirely missing some updates I would expect to be included when it comes to massive changes, such as the addition of clue scrolls, or the change from hit points to constitution, the addition of pets, and maybe even the tool belt. Jagex also made a very important game change in 2009 to make RuneScape less focused on skilling by yourself through owning resources like you would with old style mining. The introduction of social skilling such as Ivy or the Living Rock Caverns are completely ignored in the book, which is weird to me when the book covers several changes to the game and Jagex's approach to how they released updates through the years, but completely skips over one of the most important ones which still affects new updates and reworks today, like for example the Mining and Smithing rework. Just about every page contains screenshots or concept art, which gives you plenty to look at while flipping through the pages. A lot of the concept art has never been released before, giving you a pretty exclusive insight to content that was never released, such as the design for a Lumbridge graphical rework or the Wilderness expansion which got shelved. The main storyline told in the book, however, is for the most part nothing new. Though Alex Calvin has taken the time to talk to a range of Jagex staff about the years of development of both the content, the game and the company as a whole, the overall information you get here is also available online, either on the wiki or through the official documentary on YouTube. It is all collected in one place with the book, however. For anyone who's either new to RuneScape or just wants to read about the game's history in a clean and orderly fashion presented to them by the developers of the game rather than through player-made timelines, this is the perfect option for you. The book does contain some minor bits of trivia which I don't think are available in other places. Information such as how many subscribers there were at the peak in 2007, how many percentage of players left RuneScape after the EOC was released, that Jagex hit a new all-time high with 1.2 million subscribers in 2020, or that the old-school team had to put 2-3 days off to deal with the drama after each Deadman tournament. Don't get me wrong though, even though most of what you'll read is nothing new, the interviews about the content are still very interesting. It's cool to be able to read about the development and thought behind the content you've been playing. Though the information itself is available in other places, the way the developer talks about their passions and their thoughts can't be found online. 
For example, when the Garu brothers explain how they created RuneScape, it's a story you know everything about, since you've heard it so many times before. But the way they explain it from their own perspective is inherently interesting. It's worth mentioning you have to be critical of the interviews in the book, however. Though Calvin has done a pretty good job finding Jmod quotes to every update he covers in the book, not all interviews are exclusive, or even by the person credited in the book. An example is the page about the Wilderness expansion, where it appears his interview to Mod Osborne about the update, when in reality, he's taken the quote from a Discord comment by Mod Raven from April 2020. He's also chosen not to include an angled remark about the player's ever-changing opinions. Showing Calvin has taken the time to not include negative comments about Jagex or the community. He also changes the words was a massive undertaking to would be a massive undertaking. Which though it might seem small, does have an explanatory effect on where Jagex were in the planning process when the update was shelved. That makes me skeptical of the rest of the interviews in the book. Which ones are exclusive and which ones are quotes is just found online and changed to suit the book. And which of these quotes are taken out of context to appear more positive than they really are. There's also small inconsistencies in the book. For example, when the author writes about 99s, he at one point says the Garus expected it to take a long, long time to reach the final level. But just a paragraph down, he claims the Garus thought it'd never happen. The book is without a doubt a big advertisement for Jagex. There's not a single mention of anything that could put Jagex in a bad spotlight, such as in-game riots or the lack of communication Jagex have had over the past years. The book does talk about the unfortunate decisions Jagex have made in the past, such as the rushed EOC or the addition of MTX. But play it off as a redemption arc where Jagex made things better by listening to the community or presented as not that big of a deal. What I think got to me the most regarding that is in the section about old school, where the book explains the polling system and presents the players as being whiny for reacting to minor unpolled changes, such as when they added a pub in Lumbridge. The book explains this as the players being true to the old RS and Jagex listening to the community by allowing them to decide these minor details after the initial feedback. What the book is ignoring is that the heat around unpolled changes are there because it might lead to bigger unpolled changes down the line. A predecessor Jagex have said multiple times in the past in relation to other things, such as the scale of MTX promotions in RS3. Seeing these issues with the book and the entire project being made to make Jagex and the game look good, I fully understand they can't and won't shoot themselves in the foot and fully admit their mistakes and how angry their players can be. Seeing this would put them in a bad light, something they're clearly trying to avoid in the book. Despite this, I did hope for them to be a little bit more critical of themselves rather than painting an image of Jagex being this transparent company that listens all the time and every mistake they make can be justified as doing their best to please the players. The book is meant to be sold commercially and presents the timeline of the game since its beginning, which it does brilliantly. Though there is information missing to paint a more correct image of the game's vibrant history, it is by all means a good history lesson told from Jagex's perspective, the way Jagex wants to tell it. If you didn't know what to look for on the RS wiki, the book gives you a good idea of how RuneScape has developed over the years, as a timeline for the game, despite downplaying some of the more negative sides. The author interviews the wiki administrators Gas Lloyd and Cookmeplox about how RuneScape appeared to them in the early days, which is important to include when it comes to explaining why RuneScape became successful. There's also a mention of a player visiting the Jagex office and what the game meant to him in his life. With that said, I do miss more of the player's impact in the game. A lot of other player history I'd consider important is missing. Zesma isn't mentioned once in the entire thing, despite being named one of children's largest idols by Cartoon Network in the golden era of RuneScape. Player moderators aren't mentioned a single time, despite their impact on the community. Neither Rab or the other RS beta testers are mentioned, despite shaping a lot of the early day RuneScape. Rab's content is actually credited to the Gowers, which is indirectly incorrect. Though they coded Rab's content, they didn't write it. The small part of the book talking about the RS wiki also contains some errors, such as Jagex claiming the wiki is hosted on their in-house servers, which isn't the case. Ian Gower is listed as having started working at Jagex in 2014 in the part of the book where they explain how they founded RuneScape. 
when the author writes about Priftinus being released in RuneScape 3. He refers the reader to the page about Old School's release to read more. Minor details, sure, but I think it's weird to call the book a history book when it's ignoring what at least I'd consider important information in the game's history, both on the impact the game have had on its players, and the ways the game have been shaped directly by the players over the years, also prior to old school's polling system. Not to mention the mistakes in the book, some as large as miscrediting quotes. And, just because I found it amusing, there's a part where the CEO mod Pips says the strategy for releasing content in the game is to release first and fix later, which might explain some QA issues the past few years. Despite a high price, the book is, as mentioned, really high quality. It is a genuinely interesting read for any player who deemed themselves a true RuneScape fan, and is worth keeping in the bookshelf for years to come. Especially to show your kids what game you spent hours on end no lifing in your youth. Despite some missing details and wrong information to a small degree, it's mostly an accurate and well organized story which you can be proud to have been a part of. Reading the stories from the developers is genuinely fun, and looking at the art from start to finish really shows how far the game has come. As a fan of RuneScape, I can live with knowing the book focuses on the positives and ignores the negatives. Where the player's side of the same story might be a bit more colorful, this is the way Jagex wishes to present the game to their audience and I can respect that. 6 out of 10 cabbages. Would buy if you have played the game for longer than you're proud to admit. Thanks for watching, hopefully you enjoyed my little book review. <laughs> Until next time, my name is Will Miss It and I'll see you all later.